Well, hello again. I am back from the land of misery. Um, stressed <laughs> and looking forward to not working. going back for some working. time. Yes, where have I been, Andy? Uh, you've you've been the National Snow Show, haven't you? I, I have. Oh, I have. It. Where, where have I been? I have no idea. Probably Capro. I've been working. I've been working on the Kitchstein Horn I'm Ice. Se- I'm season tired already. <laughs> I've done, I've done two days of work. <laughs> yep, I can I can know that. Well, well, actually, the, the show was only bloody two days, so all that cost, all that travel, all that transport for the sake of two days was the first obvious criticism that exhibitors would have had because it's it is a lot of investment, you know, especially for me. I've got to fly out there. Okay, the UK sales team and marketing teams in England, so it's not so bad for them. But actually to set up these two huge stands um and then invest all that money, then the sponsorship around the whole place and things, two days is it's short. I mean, I was about to say it was long. London was long because it was four days. And the third, actually, in fairness, when I spoke to Rob Stewart, um, he said really the Thursday was designed around the media to give them a chance to come down yeah, on yeah. the Thursday, have a meetings at night time, talk to people, and then really it kicked off proper for the the punters on the Friday. So, but yeah, Saturday, Sunday just seemed to go ridiculously fast. And, and like any time, you've got some dead time in um, Saturday and Sunday, yeah. especially like Sunday afternoon from 1.30. It was just like ghost town. So, and, so you, probably, you probably went all the way down there to do about seven hours of work. You know? and, and were the seven hours busy? Uh, don't get me wrong. It was extremely busy with people talking about Brexit. Um, <laughs> and if they weren't talking about Brexit, they were talking about COVID. And the season ahead. Um, yeah, but in fairness, it wasn't just tyre kickers. It was, in general, there was a lot of people very, very interested. But as I was saying to you off camera, you know, the, the whole model of Ski Instructor Academy has changed yeah. from being this this company that was world-renowned and the first ever to do these, you know, very accelerated level ones, level two, straight into a full season job. You know, the British market's thrown that away. They've, they've thrown away their ability to work <laughs> in Europe and COVID has stole the availability of Japan, for example, this mm-hmm. year. But what I do see is for next year, like a massive surge in bookings for our courses where they're going to come to Austria get the level 2 and then go to Japan to work for example that course is booking out fast with a UK market because most people under 30 can you know are guaranteed almost a visa in in Japan and also it's the same with Canada it's just like selling out so unless the European market changes and you know this reactiveness we expect to happen with the Austrian government soon where they go we didn't have enough instructors actually oh god the ski schools couldn't find anyone maybe there's a visa in place for 2000 and uh, what would that be 22 but I think it's going to probably be two years me I think while we're on the visa topic, I think we talked about this on one of the previous podcasts. We said there was going to be a shortage of not just ski teachers, but also hotel staff in Austria because the news report had been talking about Salzburg probably couldn't operate to capacity in all hotels. And I think it's screaming out that it needs to be fixed and it needs to be fixed very quick. And I say... But as I say, they're they're going to be reactive here. They're not going to be proactive because of COVID. They, They literally can't focus on two major subjects at a time. And obviously COVID takes priority on everything at the minute. Um, I mean, you know, talking of COVID as well, you know, going back to England, I can see why the cases are so high. You know, I mean, I've traveled the world through COVID and and England doesn't doesn't have an idea. (laughs) It's living in cloud cuckoo land. Where did you fly from? Did you fly from Munich? I I flew from Salzburg. I flew Salzburg to Frankfurt. And then obviously I had to come out of the Schengen zone at Frankfurt, which immediately cost me 70 minutes of standing in a queue with my passport because, yeah, you're now leaving Schengen. So that that was a waste of time. And um, fortunately, the flight that I had was slightly delayed. um, So I was able to make the connection to Birmingham. Um, So that wasn't, you know, so stressful. But of course, when I got to England, then I had to to drive from the airport to one of these two-day, you have to have a test within two days. Well, for me, it was important just to get it done. Um, so I had that uh, COVID test and then headed to the hotel and then we headed um, straight to the, um, the exhibition, the NEC, to set up the stands ready for the Saturday morning. 
Well, okay. And then at the exhibition, what was the COVID kind of thing? Was was there any re- regulations or? Well, it wasn't that there wasn't regulations. It's such. I mean, they 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 were very keen to say only double vaccinated people with the vaccination certificates are could get in. Okay. Um, and you had to show them. You got a you got a wristband to say you'd been checked, but. Basically, England's dismissed the whole mask thing, full stop. Like, mm. you know, so I would say that you'd be lucky if there was about 5% of the people inside that packed area at times had a mask, had a mask on. on. Now, because obviously I knew I had to get back to Austria because we've got 200 people arriving and <laughs> nobody would know what's going on. I, we, we decided we would wear those face screens. Okay. So the masks didn't work because you can't really talk through those FFP2 masks. They're like, yeah. bloop, 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 I'm from, bloop, bloop. like people will be going, what, what's he saying but even actually those do, do, screens do people not say that anyway <laughs> well, probably do i usually talk like that but um the the screens actually also muffle a lot because the yeah. sound sort of bounces back, back over you. Yeah. so you can see people sort of like coming closer and closer to try and hear you and it's like stay back get back from me <laughs> so we had these um plastic these, these plastic screens in front of our face and it also like because we thought well we need but we were the only ones there was nobody else in any exhibitor stands had masks they, wow. they were all unmasked um, and oh. you would see some guests like sorry what have you but yeah like guests coming in yeah. they had masks on you would see it more in the older market like you know like people 50s 60s occasionally with their surgical masks but yeah i'd say about five percent if you were lucky everybody wanted to shake hands which okay. I, I can i mean after 18 yeah. months of not doing that yeah, yeah, that yeah. felt strange i mean i i had a situation in the the hilton hotel where i was staying because when I got there, they didn't have any hot water. Um, <laughs> so it was like, hmm. Uh, so I was kicking off about that. But anyway, the manager came to see me the was, next day. Was, was this a result of Brexit? <laughs> well, actually, it wasn't just that. The hilarious thing was, was when I went to the business lounge, um, they said, here's a list of things we don't have. And this guy was kicking off in front of me. He's going, what do you mean you don't have them? And there were weird things. When I went to have a look at the list, it was like biscuits and sausage and like we had, like there was all these weird things they didn't have and i was going well and like i was like why is he kicking off so much but it just seems to be the way in the uk like yeah, you just maybe. don't you just don't have anything and and these this list of things they didn't have was because of brexit, brexit. yeah they, they couldn't get delivery couldn't delivery there's about 20 items on the list that they couldn't have and uh well at the time it was like i, I didn't really look at it much but the yeah so the, with the show i was a bit taken after traveling the world in a lot of different places how yeah, you could see why the cases were so high in England. Obviously, yeah. the, the COVID's done and dusted as far as England's concerned. Um, and it's really look after yourself. And that, that's how we took it. We just made sure there was gel on our desk. We had face masks on. Um, and we tried to, you know, keep a relative distance from people as much as we can. And yeah, you know, so that was that. Was that. Um, the great thing was, obviously, I got my English breakfast. That was cool. <laughs> you know, which I, I haven't had for a long, long time. So that, that, was, that, was, that was cool. And I also went, I went to Starbucks quite a lot. And she says, what are you called? What did you tell her? Paul. <laughs> and she said, Paul? I went, yeah, Paul. Paul from the SIA. She went, Paul. She went, right, well, okay. So what did she write on my cup? Hall! Hall! <laughs> so I got my cup and I was going, she went, Hall! I went, what, Hall? Who the fuck is Hall? Like, <laughs> so, so I'm now called Hall with three Brilliant. extra espressos and a, uh, what was it? Extra hot. So yes, that was, that was my name. Uh, what else happened? Yeah, so I then, uh, this was our stands. Okay, pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. How big is that then? They are about three by twos. Um, so fair size. And then we, we also had the sponsorship around the, the slope, which was a bit of carpet, which was actually really steep. So it was meant to be like a, a trias thing. I saw Jesus, one it picture. Was, it must have been about 20 degrees, 25 degrees. Yeah. I was thinking, crazy. And what was it? Was it a rolling carpet? Or no, was no, it no, just, no, a... just a piece of carpet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a piece of carpet um, where you could try out. And obviously, yes, it was, it was leading to a lot of smashing and banging and people falling over and stuff. And then, of course, as Andy knows, I sent you the, the video. Yeah. Uh, here's walking into the entrance. Left and right, there was uh, sort of ski boot fitting going on, which I'm, I'm playing this, by the way, if you're watching it on YouTube. Somebody's book there about how wonderful they are. Um, and yeah, that was the boot fitting area. Oh, was, okay, so there was a specific area for boots, was there? It, it looked like that generally they were all immediately as you came in, those those, those sort of stands. Um, and in fairness, I know people were, were complaining that there wasn't much. I mean, definitely, you know, things like this got... <laughs> Yeah, Repu- Republic of Cats, and I think yes. was Woodland Trust was there. 
the yes. RAF. And the, the best one was the CBD. Yeah, you know, why? like, but not just one stand because the, the girl came to me at the end of the um, uh, the end of the show by about three o'clock, obviously panicking because I hadn't sold anything. And she's like, oh, this CBD is really good. Um, if you want some, we're doing it cheap for exhibitors. You know, you can get it for 30 quid cheaper this one and 20 quid cheaper that one. And, um, you know, it was like, yeah, you probably didn't sell any because it's like not probably what not people really were coming to, to show, is yeah, it? was people were coming to buy. Yeah, Ooh, skateboard, skate, ramp. skateboard ramp as well. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can, you can actually see it wandering around, you know, I know it's a bit shaky, but I just rushed around so Andy could see all the bits and pieces. I think most people were disappointed because, although actually I thought, Gary and I both thought, oh, there's actually quite a lot of things to sell. Like, mm -hmm. you know, th there were no deals though. I think people go there for big deals, don't yeah, they? They're looking for like, yeah, yeah. like, you know, 50% oh, off this. And actually the stand next to one of our other stands did really well and was full on. But if you looked at it, it was that type of stuff. Cheap, like, you know, like 50 off and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And that seemed to be very busy. Whereas I think like the Salomon stand or something like that would have been not so busy. So, yeah, it's, it's not easy. I, I was basically sat home while you were at the show and I was watching comments come in on Facebook. And there was things like it wasn't as family orientated as people expected. Um, would, you, would you say, would you, would you agree? Yeah, I would agree that Battersea is much more set up to be an entertainment from the minute they walk through the door. The kids are going to have loads to do. There's a lot of, there's a lot, they looked like there was a lot more, um, in Battersea there would be a lot more of these like talks going on. Because, you know, when a talk happened, it would empty the whole place. Literally, everybody would sit down and listen to like Ralph Fiennes or somebody, you know, talking, yeah. which was actually for exhibitors was a, was a bit of a pain, but it just showed you how popular them talks are. You know, people like to listen to people mm -hmm. talk about their experiences. There's, there's the steep slope. There's there. the steep slope. I mean, come on. That is quite steep, isn't it? Uh, you know, like, you know, it was, and they would put like a jump in as well, just to make sure somebody did break their, their arms and legs. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, it, it lacked that, definitely. And the weird thing was that they probably hired that whole area, that whole hall number six, and they, they only used about two-thirds of it because mm -hmm. obviously there wasn't enough stands turned up. Yeah. They could have used the other third just to create a playground, like literally a big football pitch with a soft play area or, or mm. something, and it would have created that entertainment as well. Um, so, yeah, it was that was strange. Basie so, were there. Yeah, yeah apparently ba Basie had a really, really small stand is what I heard. Well, well they did. They only had a one-by-one, one, I think. Yeah. But in fairness, the least they were there, and normally they're not there. Okay. They, they don't bat say they don't have a stand. They just wander oh. around a bit. So at least they turned up, which is, you know, something. People got to, to talk to them. The ESF had a huge stand there. Right, okay. As you can see. Right, um, the RAF were there as well. Ski Club of Great Britain. Uh, um, so, yeah, and this is the big, like, dining rooms and usual stuff, food and that. But I think the thing that really wound people up was the parking was 16 quid. Ooh. It was like, what? Well, but then your ticket was free. No. Entry to the show was free, no? No, 10 quid. Yeah, but literally every every stand was giving away free tickets before. Well, they were. But no, look, we had people come who paid, and we were giving away free tickets. People just didn't pick them up. So people paid to go. <laughs> people paid. <laughs> no. So no. Six, 16 quid for parking, 10 quid to get in, 26 quid. Yeah, well, plus if you bring a family. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just trying to think. It becomes family, a big food, drink. Yeah. yeah, it becomes a big Pretty expensive. Out. And another thing that I, I was hearing online, and I couldn't see any of it, any evidence of it there, was the, there wasn't a great deal for the snowboarders. Um, well, I, I sat with, um, I remember the, the lad was called Alex from the Snowboard Podcast. He came and seen us and, and had a chat with us on the stand. Then he asked me to go over and do a, a, a podcast with him, which I did. So they, they were there running around trying to uh, wave the flag for snowboarding. They were, they were keen to get the message out. And there was some snowboard present there. But I would agree, you know, like, like in skiing, it's, it's the same. You know, it's 80-20. Yeah. Um, it was definitely 80% leaning towards towards skiing. Um, but there were people there present that were, you know, obviously heavy into snowboarding as well. So uh, whether it was a disappointment or not, I, I get why people want to slay things because they just generally want to. But um, in fairness, it was a COVID year. It was their first year of trying it. But... I have to say, if Battersea and Battersea are already talking, like we're going to go ahead next year now again. Okay. So they're back on board. If they do go back on board, I think Birmingham's going to have it difficult because even if we went back to Birmingham, 
we would not invest that much money in it because we'd have a presence there maybe maybe if we do a Bayesian thing have a one by one you know like a little <laughs> yeah, presence yeah. but Battersea is where it happens okay and the accessibility of Battersea clearly showed up because people were coming from London to Birmingham and places and going god I've driven all the way up here for this mm. like they were a bit wound up by that so they had an opportunity to show themselves they failed um because also even I had to have a word with them because at one point the well actually from the start on Saturday the toilets went down so the huge toilets at the back of the hall were out of service so I'd said to one of the, like to Chris, the, and I'd said to him, where's the toilet? He went, oh, it's just outside, like there. So I went, all right. So I wandered outside. I walked into it. It was no bigger than this room, Andy, the toilet. Whoa. It must have had about, you know, three places to piss in. It was, there was already about 30 people in it. I just looked and went, well, that's COVID soup. It was ridiculous. So I went to the info and just went, are you joking me with that toilet? He goes, oh, is it a bit crowded? Is it a bit crowded? <laughs> and he dragged him off uh, how, how many attendees in a, in a day? <sighs> Actually, good, good, good question. There must have been quite a few thousand. Like, you know, I mean, usually it must have been like, you know, I don't know. I'll have to find out. But, but yeah, so, and then the toilet stayed off all weekend. Never ever went back on. So I ended up having to walk like about 400 metres to the toilet somewhere else because I thought, I'm not going in there. I mean, it was ridiculous. But this was the whole COVID thing. It was, there's no point in having like, let's check people's bands when they walk into the place. But by the way, when you go into the toilet, you're in a six metre by six metre toilet with 50 yeah, people strange, standing over your back. So they were doing stupid things. They didn't have an eye for it. They didn't have an eye for understanding what services and what people want for their money. Mm -hmm. And nobody nobody came and asked from the stand when what was it like how did it go for you what can we improve next year it's like well wow. okay then clearly you're not that interested <laughs> you, you, so, would, you would have thought that that would have been the first thing oh after, yeah after the event right oh, give us your feedback yeah. let's make it better next year yeah but what about um the talks you said that the talks would empty the floor did did you get to listen to any of the talks no well actually well i'm saying empty the floor. I mean, that was one that did that um, but the rest were, I, I walked across and there was two, there was two women talking about something, but uh, actually I started to fall asleep. So <laughs> I was like, um, and, and then I did this experience of skiing and our eco-friendly product way of, oh God, it was just like, what is this? So I just walked away. Yeah, it wasn't entertaining. Um, uh, okay. it, you needed somebody up there, you know, standing in front of everybody who is entertaining, yeah. who can tell a story, you know, and grab the attention of the audience. So yeah, that was, that was a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, um, whether the learner lessons or not, I don't know. It was a mess to set up. It was a mess to set down. I mean, everybody was kicking off when they were they were trying to take their stands down because they couldn't manage the traffic properly. That everybody parked outside, although there was absolutely yeah. loads of spaces inside to get your car near to your stand. They wouldn't let you do it, no. so you had to drag stuff absolutely miles. Yeah, yeah. I think I think this is always the same. The, the setup day at these shows and the breakdown afterwards is always the same problems. Um, I know when we used to do the drink shows in London, same thing. Everybody wants to get their van in to get their kit out as quickly as you can to get a getaway. Because once the show's over, you want to be gone. Yeah. And even though these places like the NEC have got big loading areas, they're not big enough for when everybody wants to go at once. Yeah, but, but the main thing was, was why they were wound up was because it was only like 20% full. And there yeah. was 80% of slots empty, but he was going, I'm not allowed to let anyone else in. He shouted at me. And they were all yeah. kicking off because nobody wants to drag all this stuff. Like, you know, it's like, it's so it's much, so quite heavy. Yeah. Um, so that was bad. And then obviously I had to, to fly back um, the following morning, get up at three o'clock in the morning to, um, to get to the airport for four. Um, of which when I got to the airport, nobody checked anything. Nobody checked the PCR fit to fly. It wasn't necessary to have it. Yes, they checked the, the double vaccine. Um, I got to Frankfurt. Um, and of course, I missed my connection because they allowed me 50 minutes to go from now non-Schengen to Schengen. So, of course, I hit the border control again. I couldn't get through it. And although when you look at the pictures of the border control, there actually wasn't that many. There was about 25 people in front of me. The trouble is, is at border control at the minute, they just nobody's ready. They get to the border control and they'll go, right, passport, and they'll go, right, now COVID 
show me your vaccine certificate. People then put their bags down and they start going through all their documents to find this piece of paper. Nobody's ready. And that 25 people actually does take 25 minutes, you know? And there's nobody there at, let's say, you know, at Frankfurt there, there was nobody there standing there going, right, who needs to be expedited? Who's got a connection? Yeah, who's got a connection that leaves in the next 25 minutes? Right, you're going straight there. You go straight to that guy. It wasn't there. So what did I get? A nine-hour delay because I missed my flight. And of course, the best bit was, I'm the type of person who will try and make it. So I'm running everywhere, absolutely sprinting. And I just remember coming round the corner and this is what presented me. If you're on YouTube, you can see now a picture of um, the the, the tunnel that literally there was no end to. And I just looked at the end of it and went, it was like three minutes until the flight was due to take off. And I'm thinking, this isn't happening. And the sweat was absolutely <laughs> dripping off me because I had one of those North Face padded jackets on as well. And I was just like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through it? And then I got to the desk where the flight was and it, okay, fair enough. It was one minute after it should have departed. Oh, nobody there though. Nobody waiting for me to say, I know you've missed your flight. You know, we understood and we're all waiting for you to massage your ego. <laughs> no, 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 there was just nobody there. So I goes to the nearest person from Lufthansa and they went, now nah, you'll have to go back to A, which literally all was the way 20. Back down the yeah, tunnel. Yes, exactly. I had to go back down the tunnel, all the way back, and to the service centre to get rebooked onto a, another flight. So anybody who's got a quick connection, you can literally forget it. If you've even got the slightest of delays, and the best bit was when I pulled up at Frankfurt in the plane, it wasn't a gate. It was outside where you have to get on a bus uh. and that uh, instantly, I mean, <laughs> there's no chance. So all told, it was a stressful time. I did enjoy the flapjacks. I did enjoy the caramel shortbread and, and the English and breakfast coffee. and my coffee. I enjoyed that. And they called, hey, Andy, there was so many people coming down about the podcast, you wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was coming down. I know you. I went to Starbucks. I, was, I went to Starbucks to get a coffee and I just walked out with my coffee and this guy's there with his family and he goes, and he, he's got his iPad out and in the iPad's playing the podcast. Brilliant. And he goes, I know you. <laughs> he goes, but, but he says, I don't like you. <laughs> he says, actually, it's not you I don't like, it's your mate. He says, in fairness, he said, uh, yeah. he said you're not the one that criticised the snowboarders. <laughs> he says it was Andy. He says, I but I still listen to you. <laughs> I, I posted on the s- Saturday morning, didn't I, that it was going on. And if you go to the, st- the show, then make sure you go down and <laughs> make see you Paul. Make sure you annoy Paul so with that <laughs> Went out to about 20,000 people, go and annoy Paul. So they did. They did it, Sam. Poor Sam was there and he was going, he would go up to somebody and go, yeah, can I help you? And they'd go, no, 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 I want to speak to him. About the podcast. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Nice so one, thank folks. you very much yeah. for visiting us. You can see how um, how friendly I am. <laughs> <laughs> if um, you, um, I suppose we we should. If you were at the show, whether you went to see Paul or not, which you should have. Which you should um, have. What did you think? What did you think of the show? Was it was it good? Was it bad? What what do you think they should improve for next time? Tell us in the comments. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Because you know we will be back I suppose but we will be a much smaller um, show if we, we decide to go there exhibition stand but we'll save it I think for battle and yeah. we would put our strength in behind that um, and again we're going to come back to the same question is there really a need for two shows because they're probably going to run the same week like within a week yeah. which also was like well, a bit of a bind you know what I mean um, yeah, it, it, it's it's difficult to know. So please, please let us know your 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 views. It would be really, really interesting. And and also, I suppose if there were two shows next year, Battersea and the NEC, which one are you more likely to go to? Oops, I put the crickets <laughs> on. Put the crickets on. <laughs> See what I have to work with, people. <laughs> I'm stressed from England. Bye for now. <laughs>